So today we are painting a jellyfish using watercolor. Now I'm going to start by drawing with a pencil here just the cap of the jellyfish and I'm working on a cold press watercolor paper um, which will absorb the water I'm using a lot better. Um, if you don't have that, look for a, a heavier piece of paper. So I'm doing a very basic um, oval shape here for the jellyfish cap, essentially the top of the jellyfish. And I'm just creating sort of this three-dimensional line below. Now I'm going to start going in with water here. So this is a clean brush, um, a small brush, and I am going in with just clean water. And I'm just going to wet the inside um, of the, ta the top of the jellyfish cap. So this is just a very thin layer of water and then I'm going to go in with my paint and I'm going to go in with a blue here and I'm going to really let that paint move with the water so this is a working on wet um, wet on wet technique for watercolor and so you'll really see that paint move in the water and spread and I'm going to let it do that um, one of the things when you're doing watercolor is really to let the paint do what it wants to do it has a bit of a mind of its own so I'm just sort of outlining here and I'm letting the paint bleed into the water that I have set down on the cap of the jellyfish I can always go in with a little bit of water and move that paint around. I'm going to change up colors here and I'm going to go in with red from the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to let that paint, uh, watered down watercolor, really absorb and bleed into the water. You can see how it moves and how it bleeds and how it spreads as I go here, just creating the outline of the jellyfish. And I can really manipulate it as I go. I can add more water, I can move the paint in the water. I'm going to really try to let it move in the way it wants to within the water that's been set down. Now I'm going to go in with some yellow here. I'm really just dotting it down onto a still wet um, area. So if, if it's dried at all, I would have just gone in and added a little bit of water before going down with the yellow. So I'm just going to dot that down and let that yellow spread and bleed into the other colors. Let it almost blend by itself. Now I've grabbed a finer tip brush here. I'm gonna go back into the colors I've been using and I'm going to define the line here along the cap. So just along the edges, I'm really going to define this line. And I'm going back in, I'm adding a little bit more color, a little bit more water, really helping those colors to blend together here um, and create that very unique watercolor look where it's as though the colors have a mind of their own, they're bleeding into one another. And I'm going to go in with some water here, some more paint, and just really play with this color, let it bleed together, let it blend a little bit, um, and see what sort of effects I can create. Now I'm going to fill in this interior area 
the underbelly, um, as it were, of the cap. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just wetting the paper again. I'm being very careful, however, to leave a little bit of space between the cap I already have paint on and where I'm going to be adding paint, because I don't want those colors to bleed together. And at this point, the paint I've already set down is still wet, so it would bleed together. So you'll notice I'm actually keeping those, those colors a little bit separate, and that's something I can correct later once paints have um, dried. And then I'm going to go in with my color here. And I'm actually going to switch up the color. I'm going to be using quite a few colors in this project just to add some interest. So I'm going in with a bit more of an orange color here. And again, just setting it down onto the wet paper and letting it bleed into the space. I'm not filling it in completely, just sort of doing the edges of the outline. Now I'm going to create the thicker arms of the jellyfish. And what I'm doing is I'm going down with just water on my paintbrush. You can see that some of that orange color has bled down into it and that's okay. We will be going down with color. But what I'm doing is I'm just trying to wet the space. And then I'm gonna go in and dab in some of that color and let it bleed into the areas that I have set down water. Um, and I'm gonna go back and forth, just adding some more color, adding some more water as I go, and letting it be a bit messy, letting it blend, letting it move on the paper. Um, and we don't want these to be perfect lines. I'm creating sort of squiggly as I go, keeping it fairly messy, letting my hand shake, and then setting down um, the color on the wet parts of the paper. And you'll notice as well that I'm going ahead and I'm adding different colors. So I've gone from the orange back into my deeper red, my maroon color, and I'm going to kind of help that blend, maybe even set down a little bit more water to let it blend a little bit better. So I'm going to start really mixing some different colors on these arms of the jellyfish as I go. Colors I feel will be complementary, colors I fear, feel are interesting. It's really up to you. Whatever colors you want to use, you can create an entire rainbow if you like. You'll notice as I go really how I'm manipulating the space, how I'm adding more water, how I'm letting those colors bleed and create a bit of a mess of the arms. So, so they're fairly imperfect. And I'm even going to go in and add some deeper colors as well. I'm going to go in with some blue, maybe with some green, really define some areas there and let those deeper colors blend with some of these other colors I've already added.
Now I'm just adding some smaller little tendrils here coming uh, from the outside. Now these will be the tentacles at the very end. Um, for now I'm only adding a few little bits at the sides here for a little bit of interest initially. We will be adding more of these later. I'm going to add a little bit of green in here, I think, to blend in with the blue a little bit, to add a little bit more interest here. So constantly adding a little bit more water to help those colors bleed together. I'm just going over and I'm seeing areas I might want to add a little bit more color. As this dries, a lot of these colors will get quite a bit lighter. So just darkening some areas um, that I would like. So while I've been working on the arms and the tentacles down here, um, the cap of the jellyfish has dried. So I'm now looking at it and I'm looking at what is maybe a little lighter than I want it to be. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add again a little bit more of that color. I can re-wet the paper and go in and add a bit more color, let that color bleed. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue here, define those lines again, and really um, punch up that color a little bit more. And you might have to do that quite a bit as you're going. As the colors dry, they're going to come um, a lot lighter in the end. So you may want to do some layers and go back in and darken some spaces. So at this point I'm adding some splatter and what I've done is I've just put a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just tapping my brush to add a little bit of splatter and interest. Um, I'm not doing quite a bit, I'm using a very very light hand. Now I like the idea of the edges of my cap not being so perfect. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let some of the color bleed out of where I've set it down in the cap, the jellyfish. So I'm just going to worry the edges here and add a little bit of water and let some of that color that's still wet at the moment bleed out into the paper. And of course I can control that with um, where I set down water and, and how I move that color. And so that's what I'm doing, letting that color bleed out there, letting the edges of the jellyfish not be so defined and perfect at this point. I'm only going to do this in about these two spaces, um, on the area where there is the red and then the area where there's the blue.
So once again, as things are drying here, I'm noticing areas I'd like to darken some color. Um, I'm going to go back in and maybe define the shape a little bit. So I'm just going to sort of judge what the watercolor has done on my paper, and it'll be unique for anyone's piece. Uh, and you'll see I just go in and I add layers, add a little bit more interest, define some spaces, um, and judge as I go. Now you never really want to overwork the paper. You don't want to be laying down so much water that um, the paper starts to pill um, or starts to ripple quite a bit. But don't be afraid to go back in with a little bit of water, with a little bit of color, and do add some layers. Now I'm not loving how even all of the lines of the jellyfish arms are, and so I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go and change the length of a few of these just so that it's not so symmetrical. So I'm just going to pull down some of this color and add a little bit more color here. Um, I'm being fairly messy about it. and probably just going to pull down not all of the arms. Obviously, I want them to be uneven, so just a couple of the arms here. You'll notice I'm adding in a little bit of blue here to the red as well. I'm just sort of judging where the color is and how I can balance where I've set down some of these colors. So I'm going to add tiny little details of the blue to some of these areas as well. So 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to let this area dry. I want all of this area to be dry. So I'm going to give it a few minutes to sit here, um, let it dry out. And while I do that, I'll change my water so I have a nice uh, clean glass of water. All right, now that this is entirely dry, it's time to add the tentacles. Now the tentacles are going to be a lot more thin than the arms, and so I've got my fine brush here, and I'm gonna go back in with my color. I don't want too much water on my brush. Get a good mix of my color on there, and I'm gonna go in and start adding just from this edge of the cap of the jellyfish, just some squiggles coming down. And again, I want to be fairly imperfect with it. Um, I'm going to use both of my colors here. I'm going to go in initially with some blue here. Pulling it down all the way there. A little bit longer than the arms themselves. I think that's a little bit interesting. I'm going to go in with a bit of the red as well on this side and I'll probably play and mix the colors a little bit as I add a few more of these tentacles and I'm pulling the color down and then I'm going to add a number that are a little less um, straight, a little less vertical uh, that maybe pull behind some of the other tentacles and, and come out the sides here so you can see out where I've added some of those. And really you can add as many as you like. It's not a perfect science, so add what you feel looks good, um, as many as you like. And now that I've added those, I want to go back in and I want to define this line of the jellyfish cap again. So I'm going to go back in with my blue as well as my red, and I'm going to really define that line where you see those little tentacles coming from. And while I'm doing this, I might end up defining other areas, um, areas that are now dry and I feel are a little bit too light, like these corners. I might add a little bit more color too, just to, uh, to get it to a point that I'm happy with it. So once again, don't be afraid to manipulate those colors to go back in, add some layers, add a little bit more water when you need those colors to bleed again, um, to blend so that they don't stand out um, as layers over top of layers as much. So I'm just going to go back in and, and fiddle really with the colors until I get to them, get them to a point that I'm happy. Now my final step is that I don't want to leave this so perfect, so um, clean as it were. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some more splatters over top. So once again, being a bit messy with it, watering down some color and going in and tapping that color over top. Now I am starting with color here. I'm going to use the colors um, I have been using, the blues and the reds, all over the paper here. A bit light of hand as I get a feel for what I want to do here. Switching up the color, adding a little bit more of that. And then what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to clean my brush and I'm actually going to go in with just water. So now I'm tapping water over top of some of those spatters and letting that color bleed. Um, and I'm going to be very strategic when I'm doing it, adding a little bit of splatters of water. And that's going to help all of those colors really meld together and create any, even more of that watercolor effect that we like. And once you're happy with it, you are all done. And of course you can go, you can change colors, you can add more detail. You can really have a lot of fun with it. The neat thing about watercolor is that it is an experiment. Every time always turns out unique. 
I hope you enjoyed the class today.